everyone, so welcome to another video. Um, last week was all about finding a lectureship and I thought actually let's just pause for a moment and address the question that lots of us face. Do we want to stay in academia or do we want to leave and work in industry? I certainly faced this dilemma. Um, at the end of my master's degree, I applied both for PhDs and for jobs in industry because I wasn't sure which way I wanted to go. And then when I completed my PhD, I actually worked in industry. So I left academia and I went off to industry. I absolutely loved it. For me, it was completely the right timing to go to industry. I was, you know, needing a break from academic work. I wanted a job that I could do my job, really enjoy it, but not have to study or work in the evenings or the weekends. And industry life was brilliant. I got to work up the ranks. You know, I got to form my own team. I led a group of researchers and we worked on some really cool and interesting projects. But then the opportunity came up to return to university. And I actually then left industry and returned to academia. So I've been super fortunate as a scientist to experience both a scientific career in industry and now a scientific career in academia. And I just thought I'd chat it through. You know, I discuss some of the pros and cons or just the differences in working in those two environments. It is a little bit subject specific. So I'm a scientist, which means that I'm in the lucky position, I guess, that I can have a scientific job in industry and a scientific job retaining well, within a university setting. So I'm going to run down a bit of a checklist that's on my bit of cardboard here. So I'm going to discuss the hours, the job security, the actual work itself, which is you know really important, your salary, your opportunity for travel and conferences and your career progression. And look at that both from the perspective of working in industry and working in academia. So, okay, let's, let's start off then with industry. So hours at my place of employment when I worked in industry, you know, they were fairly standard, I guess. I worked a 37 hour working week. Um, I had to make sure that I was available between 10 and 12 and I think sometimes in the afternoon were core hours as well. Um, aside that I got a bit of flexibility with how I controlled my hours. Um, I could build up a small amount of flexible time, which is where I gained a bit of time by maybe working longer one day and I could take that back the next day. So yeah, I think I had your standard working week hours, small amount of flexi time and a little bit of play each day with how long I wanted to work. Um, as long as I made sure that I covered those 37 hours on average each working week. OK, so if that's the case for industry, what's it like in academia? Well, when I switched over, one of the hardest things I found was that I didn't have to report my time to my manager. I was so used to reporting every you know, half an hour of my time and allocating it to a project and to a cost code. Um, I found it very, you know, difficult to stop reporting where I was going to be to my academic colleagues. But as a university lecturer, you know, I think I get an awful lot of freedom in how I control my time. Now, during semester, there's going to be timetabled activities. So I'm going to have to do teaching, laboratories. I have to meet my students at certain points. And because I'm the admissions tutor, there's certain events I have to attend and certain departmental meetings I need to make sure I turn up for. But outside those fixed points in my diary, I have an awful lot of flexibility to work the hours that I want to work. Um, and I think it's true in academia that we do work long hours. For me, I really like the flexibility of being able to own my own day and my own hours. So yeah, that is the hours. OK, what's next to my list? Job security. OK, is it better in industry or academia? I think it's very hard these days to have a, a secure job for life. You know, it's such a, a turbulent world that we live in. Um, within industry, I think I had a good job. I think it was a fairly secure job in the sense that there was going to be employment at my company, but it might have required me to adapt what I was working on. So I think in academic land, Job security is often related to tenure. Um, it's not something that we have so much in the UK, but I know, you know other places like in the US, as you're working up the academic ranks, people are aiming to get tenure because that's when they get a permanent post and that increases their job security. 
Here in the UK, when I started my lectureship, um, all new lectures are on a probation for a certain number of months or years, depending on your university. So during that probation period, obviously, you know, my, I was under review, my performance and how I was working at the university. When I came off probation, I guess it gives you that feeling of a little bit more job security because now you've got like your ongoing permanent contract with the university. Um, but no job is permanent forever. You know, things may change. Things may alter at the university I'm working at. So I, d I don't think there is such a thing now as a job for life. So, yeah, I think it's pretty similar between academic life and industry life. You can get good job security, but I wouldn't say you've got a guaranteed job forevermore. OK, but for me, one of the key things is the actual work. I suspect one of the reasons I stayed in industry for so many years was because I was incredibly lucky to have a job which I could actually use my subject knowledge for and use the physics that I was interested in. You know, um, this is so going to be subject dependent on whether you can do this in your subject in an industry based job. But for me, I got such good freedom to develop research ideas on science topics that I liked. I probably stayed in industry for longer there than maybe I would have thought that I was going to stay in that particular job role. Um, but it does come, I guess, with the limitation that I was working for a company and that company had customers and my research and my activities needed to fulfill the desires and the wants of the customer. And that can be sometimes a bit tricky. So if you're working on a project and you think it's got really good value, but then the customer wants to close that project and start something else, it's quite tricky for you then to be able to potentially argue to continue that work. Um, so yeah, and, and also, you know, you may be working on one topic and then your, your boss or your manager may decide that actually somebody else needs to take over that topic so you can move on to another customer facing project. So you sort of lose a little bit, I think, of your control over what you potentially are personally working on. You know, you, yes, you can express your interest and I could say what I would prefer to be on. But ultimately, the, at the end of the day, my company was employing me and I needed to be flexible to move between topics. I guess moving back from industry to academic life, one of the things that I really love and I really value is my freedom to choose the research areas that I'm working on. So it's slightly caveated. Yes, I am a applied nuclear physicist. So my contribution within the department will typically be aligned to applied nuclear physics. Although not always, sometimes I have topics that branch out into different areas and I've just had an equestrian project complete using some of our nuclear physics ideas actually applied to equine safety. So that was super fun. Um, but yeah, for me, it's that kind of freedom to if you have an idea, if you're able to win research funding for it, if you're able to get your colleagues on board or get a network of people at other universities, um, you do have that beautiful freedom to be able to explore topics that interest you. What's next on my list? Oh, the one that we often want to talk about, salary. I didn't join a company on a graduate scheme. So many of my friends joined as, as graduate scheme people at their companies. That can have the advantage that your pay might get accelerated. So certainly I know companies where they don't do a pay review every year for their graduates on the schemes, but they do one every six months. And I think that can help bring your pay up initially. Um, I was able to negotiate my salary when I started my job in industry um, and then I got pay rises based on my performance. So they were looking at how I performed within the company and my pay rise was actually linked to my performance in that company. And apart from that, my salary was then really linked to my career progression within the company. So I was working you know, as a scientist but I wanted to become a senior scientist and a principal scientist. I took on leading and managing a team and as you work up your way through those grades, then every time you get promoted, there is a link to my salary and I would essentially get some more money. Um, it will work very differently, though, depending on which industry and company you're in. That's how it worked in my company. But that's not to say that's kind of going to work everywhere. You know, some companies will be very open to negotiation between employees and the employer. And some companies will have very fixed promotion and salary schemes. I guess things are different in the university in the sense that the salary, at least here in the UK, is on a spline or spine point pay system. Um, I made a previous video about it. I'll put a link in the in the box if I if I can find the video. But essentially, you know, there are a, a scale. So there's a point grading scale, 
And as either postdocs or lecturers or senior lecturers, readers, professors, there are typically certain pay points that relate to certain salaries. So each job has like a, a number of these points in a band and then you will be allocated your salary based on that point. So you don't get the freedom like you do in industry to be able to really, I guess, negotiate and argue your salary because it's locked to this UK national scale. Travel and conferences then. So as a scientist in industry, could I travel and go on conferences? Well, yeah, the answer is yes. I took a research scientist post and that meant that I was still able to go to some conferences. Um, when I became a manager of a group of scientists, then I got even more freedom to help pick which conferences we would attend each year. Um, but I had to show that those conferences were directly useful and beneficial for the projects, for the customers that we were working for. So yeah, I mean, you have to have strong motivation and reason to attend these, these conferences and meetings. But if you do, the good thing is that my company would then finance the whole trip. You know, so they would pay for travel, they'd pay for planes, trains, hotels. I'd get an allowance each day for food. Um, so yeah, once we'd agreed that we needed to attend a particular conference or meeting and it had been approved through our management system, then from that point onwards, it was all fine. I could just make the booking and, and attend the event. So yeah, I was lucky, I think, that I got to travel an awful lot with my job. And, and actually, you know, for, from, from my perspective, because I was lucky in industry to be a kind of a slightly more academic -y industrial scientist, moving back to academic life, it's been pretty similar. You know, there's been conferences, I've traveled to meetings. I think the only difference really is the way that we finance it. So as I said, in industry, if I went to a meeting, then my company would automatically pay for it and I'd get travel expenses. Now I'm in academic life back at a university, I have to win a research grant that includes funding for travel. So when I apply for money, I need to make sure that I allow a pot of money, not only for my students to be able to travel, but also to be able to finance myself for going to these meetings. Um, so yeah, that's the only difference really, is the way that we finance that travel. Last one then in this slightly long video, career progression. What's it like in industry and what's it like in academia? So my findings within industry was that I, the company I was at, there was kind of two pathways. I could stay being a scientist pathway and work up the science kind of seniority levels, or I could move more onto kind of a science management hybrid pathway and move up the management levels. Um, it was quite clear how I would go up the, the ranks. Um, I knew that if I swapped industry, I'd be able to kind of have a career pathway at the company, the new company that I'd be working at. So yeah, I didn't feel like there wasn't going to be good career progression. Uh, and that wasn't the reason I left industry because I felt there was bad career progression. It wasn't, I could see how my career could continue to develop. I left industry because I wanted to, I guess, have that blend of research and teaching together. Um, and I wanted to try something different. And in academic life, I guess I'm going up the ranks. So right now I'm a lecturer. I hope to become a senior lecturer and then a reader and then a professor. So I think in terms of career progression, it's pretty clear when you're working in a university because of the university structure. You know, I know what ranks are above me and what levels I can work up to. Um, I will do another video about the difference between being a lecturer to a research fellow to a teaching fellow and the different ways you can career progress. But yeah, I think, you know, I, I can see my career progression ahead of me in university life just as much as I can see it ahead of me in industry life. So, yeah, I think it's super personal whether you want to be in industry or academia. What I would say, though, is, you know, as a scientist, I felt that I could have a really good, interesting scientific career working for a company as well as having a really good, interesting scientific career working for a university. So, you know, in, at least in my case, I didn't feel like I had to become a lecturer in order to retain being a scientist. And indeed, I loved working in the company. It was awesome, great people, great traveling, great networking. Um, but now I'm back in a university. I love being back in the university. Um, so yeah, if, you, if you're debating whether you want to be in a university setting or a company setting, just weigh up what, what kind of is important to you um, are there particular parts of the working day? Do you want to have control over your own research direction? Are the hours important to you? Is the salary important, the career progression? Then evaluate all those bits for your subject. And yeah, I guess it's exciting either way, but it can be a bit nerve wracking making that choice. Um, for me, it just sort of happened, I guess, organically. I, I left with my PhD into a company and I was just very lucky, right time, right place. I, I returned to academic life as a lecturer, but yeah, 
loads of good luck if you're making your choices. Um, I wish you all the best of whichever route you're going to take or you're considering taking. In future videos, I'm going to talk a little bit more about career entry points into university and the different subjects, because I know that's up for you know, people are interested. And I'm going to try to get some of my friends to talk about their, their entry points into university so we get a few more subjects covered on this channel. But as always, do leave me a comment, you know, um, really, really like reading the comments. Do like and subscribe. Sorry if this video was a tad long. <laughs> it was quite fun to film, trying to do the two perspectives. But have a great week, look after yourselves, and I'll see you next Monday for another uni-focused uh, YouTube video. Bye. <laughs>